All right, here's part two of lesson two for 15.1. Still continuing on with our equilibrium constant expressions and actually now solving them for a k value to predict the position of equilibrium. Uh, we're going to take a look at 2a and b and 3b in this video and go through those solutions. You can see in 2a we have a decomposition-like reaction. Phosphorus pentachloride decomposes partially into um, phosphorus trichloride and chlorine gas. And equilibrium concentrations are now given to us as 1.2 to the negative 2 moles per liter, 1.5 to the negative 2, and 1.5 to the negative 2. So we need a balanced equation. We need an equilibrium expression. So we will do that. Okay, here's our balanced equation is given to us. We're trying to solve for K. Now, in this case, we just are given equilibrium expressions. So we can go straight to the solution here. All right, if I give you everything at equilibrium, there's no ice table necessary to solve. We just have everything. So for PCL5, we are told that you have 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2 moles per liter. For PCL3, we are told that is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2. And for chlorine, 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2. Now, you are dealing with some fairly small concentrations, so actually solve the equilibrium law. Don't try and interpret these things visually. All right, our uh, exponent law uh, solutions or experience probably isn't good enough for most of us to avoid this. So we take a look at it. We'll go with this. We know that it's the concentrations of our products, PCL3, raised to the power of 1 here, chlorine gas, raised to the power of 1 again, and PCL5, raised to the power of 1. I would, if I were you, in all of these, especially learning from home, make sure that you take the time to write out the equilibrium law. It is so much easier and the success rate goes so much higher for students if you take the extra minute to write and balance the equation, look at your states, and write the equation that you're going to use. If you think about anything you've ever done algebra for before, uh, where you are working with a formula, we always started by writing down the formula. We didn't just go straight to the numbers. Oftentimes we did that, we had transcription errors and put numbers in the wrong spots. So now you have a template as for what numbers go where. Now we can put those in. PCL5 is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2. Same thing for chlorine gas. And this is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 2. All right, so we ha now have this. This just has to go through your calculator the right way. Don't forget, you have this entire numerator to resolve before you divide. So if this goes into your calculator the right way, and yes, there is a shortcut available for the numerator here. All right, if it goes in the right way, you end up with a very small number, 1.9 times 10 to the negative 2, or 0 0.00, oops, 0 0.019. This is a number far below 1, is much smaller. I have some confidence in this, so I'm going to say that this is a reactant favored position of equilibrium. All right, so we could go back up to our equation and we could show that with the less than 50% reaction moniker. All right, hope that made sense. Let's go on to uh, 3b here. You can see I have the equation already set up for us. We do need to set up our ice table um, and see what we've got. If we take a look at 3b, or sorry, 2b, Iodine and bromine react to form iodine monobromide. It's at a very high temperature, so likely these liquids that we have and these molecules would be a gaseous state. But note, two liter flask with a bunch of mole quantities. Remember, we're dealing with concentrations in these ice tables or equilibrium lines, so we will have to remember that as we go through. Okay, so for this one then, we could set up a template for our ice table, but in this case, we have all of our equilibrium concentrations given to us. We just have to resolve them. For your two liter flask, you had 0 0.024 moles of iodine. And 
and this is in a 2 liter flask. Therefore, it's 0 0.012 moles per liter. I hope that's obvious to everybody. So, we have 0 0.012. For bromine, you had a 0 0.050 molar amount in this flask, so that's 0 0.025 when we extend the same math. And we had 0.38 moles, whoops, uh, oh yes, of iodine monobromide, sorry, I didn't finish reading the line there. And so, for this one then, if we follow the same logic, that'll be 0 0.019. So there's our equilibrium concentrations. The numbers are a little different than the question, again, because we've given you a larger flask. This is something that is quite popular on that diploma exam, as we mentioned in a previous lesson. So be mindful of the Chapter 5 Chem 20 solutions connections here as we start talking about concentration. Since we have all of our equilibrium concentrations, then, we can just go to our K expression. I would have you write it out, though, okay, if you pay attention to the equation instead of looking at the numbers. The one thing that becomes apparently obvious when you look at it is the molar coefficients that go with it. Again, do it and make the formula. That's my advice to you. Shortcuts here are shortcuts to wrong answers. Okay, so we need our IBR as our product, but that's raised to the power of 2 because of the molar coefficient. Now we can put in our reactants, which are I2 concentrations and BR2 concentrations, both raised to the power of 1 in our balanced equation. Now we can go through and plunk in our numbers. IBR2, 0 0.019, raised to the power of 2, all over 0 0.012 times 0 0.025. And again, that entire denominator has to be resolved before you finish the division statement. Okay, do this uh, the right way, and it should work out to... Oops, calculator missing. I wish I could pause this, but that would be a new video. See, preparation is key. All right, so here we go. 0 0.019 squared divided by all of 0 0.012 times 0 0.025 works out to a number of 1.20. Okay, so we can see this one is ever so slightly above the value of 1, and therefore this should be product favored. Okay, there you go, that's number 2. I think we have enough time to squeeze in question 3b. I'm going to skip 3a, it's just got a, a weird thing that you're not going to see on any of your quizzes and tests. It's just that, that discrepancy we talked about when numbers are close to 1. So. So we take a look at 3B. You can see I've given you a template here. You've got some initial concentrations and only one equilibrium concentration. If I'm going to solve for K, I need to find that equilibrium concentration line and know them all. I would also need that for any sort of percent reaction. And we'll have to make a prediction upon a quantitative state, so we'll have to look at limiting reagents as well. This one's got a nasty balancing, so it's not that easy to predict and avoid doing the quantitative work for the theoretical maximum. Alright, so a bit of work to go through here. Let's take a look at it. So, in this one, we do need to finish coming up with our ice table. Now we can see that there is a certain change that we've got. We go from 0 to 1.5 moles per liter for substance Y. Everything here is gaseous. So we're going to use them all in our eventual expression. So now we just have to do some stoic to figure out what's going on. You can see that we have different mole ratios throughout, so this will take actually doing the stoic. If I have a change of 1.5 moles per liter for substance Y, and I want to figure out what's happening for substance Z, I will have to take a look at the mole ratio between these two guys. Remember, the volume of this vessel would have to be constant, so we are allowed this shortcut of going straight from concentration to the mole ratio. Y disappears, and 2 thirds of 1.5 would be a 1.0 mole per liter increase in Z. So this guy should increase by 1.0 to leave us with an equilibrium concentration of 1.0.
We need to extend what's going on for X and W, so I can start again with 1.5 moles per liter of Y, and I can take a look at the ratio between X and Y. X is one mole for every three of Y, and so one third of 1.5 is a 0 0.5 mole per liter concentration change for X. But X started at five, its change then should be a minus 0.5 to leave us with 4.5 at equilibrium. We didn't use very much of it. And then finally, you can see that same one to one rate or uh, one to three ratio. I'll do it anyway because stoichiometry doesn't take long. And you have one part W for every three parts Y to get to that same 0.5 mole per liter change in substance W. This is all because these two have the same ratio. And so this is a decrease of 0 0.5 to give us 3.5 in the end. Now I can do my KC expression. I should take the time to write out a KC expression. Again, that is always wise, especially when you have molar coefficients other than one. The number one mistake we make here is forgetting to do the uh, balancing of the equation to include those molar coefficients. So KC for this one then is going to be the value and concentration for y raised to the power of 3. This one is going to be the concentration of z raised to the power of 2, and it'll all be over the concentration of w and x. There's our template. We could look at them there, and it's pretty easy to set it up the right way. We now need to just put in our numbers. I'll try and leave them on the screen there for you. There we go. And so for y, we ended up with 1.5 moles per liter. Remember, square brackets mean that, raised to the power of 3, 1 raised to the power of 2, all over 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. Oops, ha, I put in the changes. Did you guys catch that? All right, over 3.5 and 4.5. All right, be mindful. This ice table has a lot going on with it. Know what goes where. It is easy to slip up, as I just demonstrated for you guys. So now we have that. It just has to go in the calculator the right way. Remember, all numerator divided by all numerator, uh, denominator. If you do that the right way, you get 0 0.214, therefore 0 0.21 when we maintain our significant digits here. That is a number way less than 1. Well, not maybe not way less, but less than 1. So that tells me that this should be reactant favored. All right, so we have that. The last thing we want to do, this one was percent reaction. I'll see if I can get through that one really, really quickly. So for a percent reaction, that was the actual concentration of a product over the theoretical maximum concentration of a product. Remember, that assumes that you're going to have quantitative reaction. For this one then, if we take a look at it, we have the same ratio for a particular product, so they're going to be consumed at the same rate as we are seeing here. So we can avoid the stoichiometry if you're comfortable with it by realizing that the smaller concentration should run out first than the larger concentration. If I had different mole ratios, I would probably go through and do a lot more of my stoichiometry to figure out which one was the limiting reagent. With all this stoic, yes, it can become tedious, so be patient. For this one then, I have an actual concentration at equilibrium for Y of 1.5 moles per liter. But what would be the theoretical maximum if my limiting reagent was used? Well, four moles per liter times a three to one ratio would give me 12. Five moles per liter times a three to one ratio would give me 15. So if this were quantitative, W would be the limiting reagent and limit the amount of product produce to 12. Multiply that by 100 and we get 12.5 percent which is of course less than 50 percent and you can see that we get that reactant favored equilibrium again. Okay there we go sorry that one went long but lots of explaining to do. We'll get a few more examples in in the next one to two videos. I won't be able to get through all of them that you see but uh, I will provide the answers and solutions uh, on D2L.